So I'm going to pick this photo here, which needs a little bit of work. And I'm going to choose from Photo Mechanic, I can choose to edit it with Capture NX2 directly. So the image will load into Capture NX2. And I'm going to hit the F key on my keyboard to enter full screen mode. And then I'm going to hit Command 0, or if you're on a PC, Control 0, to maximize the image on the screen. When we start with this image, the first thing that I'm going to do is adjust the exposure because you can see here that it's a little bit too dark. Uh, my flashes weren't probably pointed the right way when I when I shot this image with my, my D3. Because it's a raw file, I can easily adjust the exposure. So I can go into the Quick Fix uh, section of the edit list under Develop and find the Exposure Compensation slider. And I'm just going to drag it to the right to get a nice looking image. And you can see that when I do that, the image histogram is recalculated. So for this image, it needs about one stop or so. So I'm going to use plus one exposure compensation. With portraits, I oftentimes like to, to get a little bit better shadow detail. So I'm going to dial in a little bit of shadow protection as well. Just going to set this to five. And that just makes a little bit less contrast, which is nice for portraits. You get a little softer look. That's personal taste, but that's what I prefer. I'm going to collapse Quick Fix now and go into Camera Settings. And what I want to do here is I want to turn off the sharpening um, from the camera settings. And that way I can use my own custom sharpening settings. So you can see here I used a D3, so I it was using Picture Control. Uh, and I used Picture Control Portrait, which is what I like for portraits. It gives pleasing skin tones. I'm going to choose one of my presets here, Portrait NX, which is the same thing as Portrait, only you can see here now the sharpening is set to zero. I've made this preset so I can quickly toggle to it. If you wanted to do it manually, you could just choose Portrait or any of the other presets and just slide the sharpening uh, slider to zero. Now that that's done, I just have to remember to sharpen this image using the Unsharp Mask tool at the end of my workflow. So the first thing you want to do with, with any image, but especially with portraits, is you want to make sure you don't have any color casts, and you want to really set the tonal range of this image, set the black point, and set the white point. So to set the black point, I find the easiest thing to do is to use a black control point. And that's up here in the toolbar. If I click black control point, I can click anywhere on this image, and that will set those pixel values to be dark. Well, what I need to do, though, is know where to, to click it. I could try to eyeball it and say, well, here's something that looks black. Or what I like to do is actually use the double threshold tool. So I'm going to check the double threshold tool, and you can see the image completely disappears. It's turned gray. And what I'm going to then do is use this little triangle here on the left-hand side, the black point slider, and I'm going to move it to the right until I can start to see some black pixels appear in the image. Once I do that, I can then place the black control point exactly on one of those black pixels and click on that. Once I've done that, I can take the double threshold off. And then I can adjust the luminosity slider to a value of about 2.0. That's usually a nice point for the black point. Now, for the white point, I could attempt to do the same thing with the double threshold tool using the the white slider, the the uh, highlight slider. But when you do that, you run the risk of um, of clipping a an image a point on your image that isn't a, a a natural looking white. So we can find this here and use the white point eyedropper, white control point, place it on there on my image. And now I need to dial the luminosity back to, oh, about 96. That looks OK. If it didn't look OK, I could move this around. And you can see, if I move it to different parts of the image, it starts to look very strange. I want to keep this this particular white, point, white control point needs to really be on a meaningful white uh, object in your image. If your image does not have a meaningful white object in it, then just don't use the white point slider. Otherwise, you'll get some really strange results. Now that I've set the black point and the white point, I'm going to use a color control point to brighten the face of the subject. So I'm going to go up here to the tool menu, uh, toolbar, and I'm going to click color control point, and I'm just going to click a color control point on the little boy's face. To see what this is doing, I can click the show selection box in the in the edit list, 
And you can see here that it's picking up, this is the, the white is the detail that's picking up. It's picking up some of his shirt too. So what I want to do is reduce the radius of influence of this control point. So I'm going to click this size adjustment uh, toggle and I'm going to just make it a little bit smaller. So now we're just picking up skin tones. And I can move it around anywhere I want on my image to, to get a good idea of what it's selecting. Once I've done that and I'm happy with the selection, I'm going to untoggle the show selection. And now I just want to increase the brightness just a little bit, maybe a value of about 14 or 12, just to add a little bit of brightness to the subject. Conversely, I'm going to darken the background a little bit, just to add a little bit more contrast uh, between my subject and the background. So this dark this light blue background here, I want to darken that. So I'm going to add another color control point by clicking up here in the toolbar. And now I'm going to place a control point on the background. Again, I can show the selection by, by clicking this. You can see what it's picking up. So here I'm going to expand it out a little bit and then hide it. And I'm going to drag the brightness slider just a little bit to the left to reduce the brightness. Now you notice here when I showed the selection, it's picking up the little boy's eyes. So if I want to, want to remove those, I can actually use the, the, um, um, the uh, slider here to reduce the size of this control point until it, until it goes away. Or I can do something different, and that's add yet another control point on the eyes. So in this case, I'll place a control point here. And I'll make it fairly small. And now it's only picking up the eyes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to check the box that says Protect Details. Okay, and what that does is that it doesn't allow me to change the brightness or contrast of that control point, but, but it does prevent other control points from interacting with its selection. So if I click this control, color control point 2 and I ask to show the selection, you see now the eyes are not picked up anymore. So that's how you can use a, a um, color control point with the protect detail slider. I'm going to collapse this step in my settings and now I'm ready to do some final retouching so you'll notice here he's got a little scratch on his face he probably scratched himself with his toenail so I'm gonna gonna zoom in by clicking um, command plus on my keyboard I want to zoom in to that area or you can use the zoom tool and zoom in to that area on the image and now what I'm going to do is I want to remove this so I'm going to use the the auto retouch brush which is the little band-aid icon up in your toolbar so I'm going to click this and then I'm going to set the brush size to be more or less the size of a little of a little um, of the area I want to to fix and you can do that by using the uh, bracket keys on your keyboard and now I'm just gonna paint over this a little bit and you can see that like magic it disappears to get out of the auto retouch brush, I'll click the arrow key and I'm going to hit control zero and resize my image back to the full screen. Now my last step is to do sharpening. You remember we turned sharpening off in the camera settings. I'm going to still do, uh, we need to sharpen this image to remove the effects of the optical low pass filter in the camera. So to do that, we're going to click new step and from the select adjustment menu, I'm going to go to the focus item and I'm going to choose Unsharp Mask. Now which values you set will kind of depend on the camera that you have. And if you have my ebook, there's a whole set of settings files that come along with the ebook that have uh, the default capture sharpening settings for just about all of the Nikon cameras out there. For the D3, which is what I used for this particular camera, uh, for this photograph, I use a setting of 35 on intensity, radius of 5, and a threshold of 2. And that works very well with the D3 at just about any ISO. Now that the image is sharpened, I'm ready to save, but before I save, I want to make a master version. So I'm going to click the version item up here in the edit list and choose new version. I'm going to call it master. If I can type it right, I'll click OK. And now, no matter what else I do, I can always go back to this master version and that's how my, my image will look. I can now use make other versions that that toggle between other different edited states but this one is my master file and that is how we retouch a portrait